What is up, everybody? Um, welcome to the Inside D3 Show. Um, I'm your host, Morgan Cheatham. This is our very first episode, so, you know, if you're here, thank you for joining us. Um, you know, hopefully we can get some episodes out, you know, every week in the future. So, um, you know, that's what we're hoping to do. But um, before we get started, uh, just make sure, you know, if you haven't already, um, follow our Twitter and Instagram pages at D3 Inside. Um, and then also follow us on our website at InsideD3.com. Um, basically, you know, we'll have updates on anything going on D3 related, um, you know, sports wise, legislation, anything like that, news stories, um, interviews from, you know, student athletes, coaches, uh, faculty, staff, anything like that. Um, you know, we're definitely going to try to keep you guys in the loop of things going on. Um, but yeah, but without further ado, um, I want to introduce our very first guest on the show, Braley Keller. Um, he's a Nebraska Wesleyan University senior. Um, he's a math major. He is a football player slash swimmer, and he's also on the national sack, the chair on national sack. So what's going on, Braley? How are you? Not much, Morgan. Thanks for having me. Uh, for sure, for sure. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for being our very first guest on here. Um, you know, how's it going? What's going on with you over there? It's going well. It's an honor to be uh, the first guest. I'm just out here uh, on campus right now. It's a little a little empty here in our athletic center uh, with everything going on with the quarantining, but still happy to be back on campus and happy to be on the call today. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. I know you were just on spring break for a little bit, um, so you know, hopefully hopefully it's not too long that you're yeah. on. But, um, yeah. yeah, I know you got online classes and stuff going on soon, so no, that's, that's fun. It's real fun. I would love the online classes. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. Um, so yeah, let's just get right into the questions, man. Um, so I know, you know, obviously you've been a, a two sport athlete over there for four years, but um, you know, what's some of like the common uh dis- mis- the misconceptions that you get, you know, being a D three athlete, especially? Um, what are some things that people you know assume just from you being a D three athlete? It's a it's a good question. I think uh probably the first um, you know, misconception that people may have about D3 athletes is just because we're not on ESPN, we're not on the highlights of the sports pages, um, playing under the lights. Um, here in Nebraska, we're actually in Lincoln, the same town as the University of Nebraska, and they turn out 90,000 fans every Saturday for a football game. And uh, we're not in that position where we're getting a thousand fans and it's, it is just a different dynamic. So I think the misconception with that is um, people just don't necessarily know um, a whole lot about D3 athletes and kind of that life. They might see it as um, maybe not as competitive, uh, which definitely is not true. Uh, we have some of the hardest workers I've ever met are, you know, they, they've been in in the weight room with me, they're my teammates. They're people that I've come to know through D3 sports. And um, I don't think it's, I don't think that's something that the public necessarily understands. Yeah, no doubt. I, I definitely agree. Um, you know, we definitely don't get a lot of the, the, the glitz and glamour that you know, a lot of D1 athletes get, especially. But, um, you know, I think it's just as competitive, just as important. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, it's, 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 it's still a, a D3 level, but it's, it's, it's still a, you know, NCAA sports so it's definitely mm-hmm. important to you know get the respect that you deserve um you know working hard as you do so for sure yeah and if i might add with that too um even though we aren't turning out the thousands of fans and we're we're not getting the press um i think that's a testament to um the true d3 student athlete is we we aren't coming here for scholarships that's core principle of d3 is we're, we're not about athletic scholarships it's academics first and that balance between um, your your school life, your personal life, social life, and then throwing in athletics, um, student athletes come here because they have a love for the game. Um, it's not about getting their name up on billboards and whatnot. It's it's simply because they love the sport and, and hope to pursue it for for an extra four years in their college journey. And I think that's what's made it even more even more special. And that's why I love D three. I couldn't agree more, man. I couldn't agree more. Um, so I know that you're, you know, part of National SAC. Um, for those of people that don't know, just kind of explain it to them a little bit, you know, what it stands for and things like that. 
Yeah, so National SAC is the National Student Athlete Advisory Committee. I'm grateful enough to serve as chair uh, currently for this year. And what National SAC does, um, it's sanctioned by the NCAA. We are a committee um, that represents every conference in the country. And what we do is we are essentially the voice to student athletes, whether it's sharing information from the NCAA to student athletes. Uh, like currently we've got a lot going on with the coronavirus and we're in a position where we're helping share information from the association to student athletes about awareness, how to protect yourself. So that's one form of the communication, but the other way um, is actually through the student athlete voice to the association. So the flip side of it, uh, we're working to um, help speak up on behalf of legislature. We provide um, the student athlete voice when it comes to effects that, you know, a new rule, whether it's in football or swimming, whatever sport it may be, if there's a rule on the, on the table, on the slate to be voted on at the NCAA convention, we provide the student athlete voice, whether we support this piece of legislature, how this is going to impact us directly. Um, and I think it's, it's awesome that the NCAA um, has national SAC because they exist as an organization because of student athletes. So they're taking the time to hear from us because simply put without them, they wouldn't, without student athletes, the NCAA couldn't exist in general. So it's great that they, they value our opinion so much. And uh, again, it's just been an honor to serve on it. Definitely. definitely. Um, you know, obviously there's three levels of SAC that, um, you know, go on. Obviously the institutional level, the conference level, and then, you know, the national level. So just kind of touch on a little bit of, you know, what those three levels represent, what they do. Yeah, so let's start um, with just the institutional level. Um, here at Nebraska Westland, um, our SAC is comprised of about 35 members. So each sport on campus has one to two reps. They're um, appointed by their coach and past reps. So we come together and we talk about institutional level things, um, whether it's helping adapt the dining room hours um, to accommodate student athletes who have later practices, uh, different issues like that. And uh, we work at the institutional level there. Uh, the next phase is the conference level. So every school, and I'm in the American Rivers Conference, so every school uh, within that will send two representatives. And we meet quarterly to mainly talk about conference-wide um, rule changes and different initiatives that are being put in place. So uh, we deal with it more there. And, and nationally, we take... Uh, a representative from every conference um, and put them in national SAC, whether they're primary or associate rep, um, each conference is represented. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I know you talked about a little bit of, you know, how important that student athlete voice is. Um, you know, you definitely have a, a, a closer, um, you know, firsthand look at how important that is. Um, just talk about how big that impact is, because I, I definitely see it firsthand, you know, when I, I was with SAC as well. So, you know, just talk about how important it is for you guys to have your voice be heard, especially, you know, the athletes themselves. Yeah, definitely. And you're you're going to understand this just as much as anyone else who's been in SAC Morgan. But uh, I think for me, I guess I'll share a story. The most impactful moment when I when I really knew um, my voice uh, had a had a push, had a say in this discussion as a student athlete was this last convention. There was a piece of legislature that we were um, right on the voting table for at convention, and it was based on training trips for swimming. And if you guys aren't familiar with the convention, when a proposal is being voted on, uh, there's kind of a discussion right beforehand where people can go up and speak, um, whether they support or oppose the legislature. And National SAC always has the opportunity to share. And um, I, I went up and shared on behalf of the student athlete opinion on whether we should support this legislature or not. And I spoke in support of it. And right before I finished um, giving my speech, I, I had finished the, the written notes of the script that we had decided. And, and I, I just really felt um, this, this weight on me. I was thinking back to the training trip my swim team took this year. And I, I knew how valuable that trip was for our training, for our just relationship camaraderie as a team. And I, I couldn't help but say it. And in my speech in front of the floor of a couple thousand people, 
um, I was like, you know, as a swimmer, uh, I, I challenge you. Uh, as, as, as a swimmer, we understand this, but as a non-swimmer, we challenge you uh, to wake up at five in the morning, jump into a freezing cold pool, tell me that doesn't have an impact on your mental health. And being able to share that, that perspective with the commissioners, ADs, presidents who are in the convention for voting on it, um, I, I truly felt that uh, that that account that I shared had a had a say in it because the vote ended up passing uh, just very narrowly. I think it was maybe a three per three percent change in votes uh, right then immediately with a piece of legislature that wasn't expected to pass, and and it did. And man, I. I was excited. I knew that um, what I said helped helped at least change a few minds. Uh, and then being able to represent the student athletes in that manner was, was so powerful. And, and that really is a testament to what SAC can do, the, the voice that we have. It's so dope to hear that story. Um, just to kind of know how, you know, especially for, you know, legislation that really hits home for you um, and, and your respective sports. Um, you know, you definitely feel a little more passionate about it and feel more driven to really, you know, get legislation in that, that helps you guys. And I think it's important for, you know, student athletes to really just go out and speak on it. And, you know, this is their opportunity to really say what they have to say and, um, you know, hope that the votes will, you know, sway in their favor. So that's just definitely important. Mm-hmm. Without a doubt. And we're in the position where um, student athletes, we don't, well, we don't cast a vote. Um, on the voting floor it comes down to you know the commissioners the ad's Um, it is that opportunity when we do get a speak up on behalf of the legislature that um, our opinion as national sat carries a lot of weight and um, like what happened this last january and has happened years before and will happen years to come um, that opinion that student athletes share is impactful whether we cast a physical vote or not exactly exactly um, so yeah, just Cohen still staying into the uh, you know the national SAC conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, just kind of talk about your experiences with stat with SAC coming in. Um, you know in the past, um, you know what you saw before you even you know got to SAC, and then what you were able to do during SAC, and then you know what you hope to see for the future of SAC as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, when I was going into my junior year here at Westland, I was fired up about everything that was going on in our institution and I started doing a lot of different research about national SAC because it's like well I knew something had to exist above the institution and conference level so went online and started researching found some old YouTube videos about and I'm like what is national SAC and I was like this that's really interesting most people probably wouldn't find it interesting but I was (laughs) loving it so kept researching reached out to my AD and commissioner of the conference and the timing lined up uh, perfectly, completely out of my hands, but somehow the timing worked for me to to be able to apply. Uh, Lucky enough to get the spot to serve on National SAC, and I had nothing but tons of questions that that first, uh, the first couple months leading up to it, trying to find out what is SAC, and when I finally got to the first meeting, I was just blown away. The the people that you get to meet, the people on National SAC, it's like, it's kind of like um, a summer camp, but after the camp is over, it's not like you just go home and never see each other again. It's like you stay connected um, for weeks, months, and years after. And the coolest part, this is why it's better than a summer camp, is because everyone in the committee is in the same spot in their life. They're they're a young adult, uh, they're in college, they're involved in sports, and they're passionate about the same things you are. And so instantly, it's like two hours into the meeting, and I've already made like 10 different best friends. Like I I start to know everyone, and you get along so well. And just that community that's built through National SAC, it really is um, the people that you've met, whether it's the NCAA staff who are just amazing or the different members on National SAC that you get to meet on, the relationships that you build through it are are just incredible. and I've been talking to SAC reps all day today already, and, and you just stay in touch, um, not just business-wise, but also just check in how the relationships are doing, um, how they're doing with their professional life. And, and it's, it's really just a blessing. So that's kind of kind of what I, how I started with National SAC and, 
and where where I am right now, what I really think is thankful. And then uh, going and looking ahead, uh, right now, uh, the biggest thing on our plate uh, is the coronavirus and, and handling that situation. Uh, we've got an informational webinar right now with Dr. Hainline, who's the chief medical officer for the NCAA. He's going to brief D1, D2, and D3-SAC about how we can help share the information that the Sports Science Institute has been putting together. Uh, we're, we're sharing that um, with our student-athletes following the call. So we're in a position with the coronavirus where we're projecting a lot of information. Um, we're doing what we can to help communicate that. Another huge topic right now, name, image, likeness. It's really hard to talk about college sports without talking about that. And <laughs> yeah, the, the really cool thing about this too, uh, it goes back to having that student athlete voice is the, the governance staff within the NCA is directly reaching out to the student athletes who are going to be impacted by it. So we have a great voice in that. And I'm lucky to serve on the oversight committee to the working group for name image likeness. So I um, kind of get a firsthand account to see where that discussion is going. And then it's more specifically within National SAC, we do have uh, three focus areas versus sustainability. So helping to reduce student athlete waste uh, right now, because we know that's that's a huge topic. Um, another working group uh, where we've got a mental health inclusion working group that continues to, to push a, a great effort and really pave the way in the mental health discussion for student athletes. And then lastly, uh, we always have a, a partnership. Low battery mode on my phone. Okay. We've got a, sorry, and then the last point is uh, we always have a partnership with Special Olympics. That's a big thing that NCAA Division Three pushes. So continuing to build that great relationship uh, with Special Olympics and continue to promote our events um, that are hosted by our D3 schools all across the country, continue to promote that well. We're definitely glad that you're, you know, one of those people that can represent it and, and you know, help make D3 a better place, make NCAA a better place, make the D3 experience better. So you know, I'm definitely, you know, happy that you're, you know, in the, in the chair to do that. So thank you again. It's, it's a huge honor and uh, it's not, not so much about me being a, a big representative, um, but more so just the honor to be able to represent those uh, student athletes who serve on the committee with me, uh, those in my conference and other conferences across the country. But um, representing 190,000 student athletes is, is amazing. And, and I, again, I just hope to do it uh, to the best of my ability. So. Definitely, definitely. So, um, you know, I want to talk about kind of your journey into D3. So, um, you know, what really made you decide to go to a D3 college? Um, you know, obviously, I know you have family within that, you know, D3 area. So we'll talk about that a little bit, too. But, um, you know, what made you choose um, D3 and what made you choose Nebraska Wesleyan, you know, in particular? Yeah, so... Um, growing up, I uh, grew up here in Lincoln, Nebraska. My dad has been the longtime head football coach here at Nebraska Westland my entire life, actually. So uh, I spent every Saturday coming here to watch football games and even going to the away games. So I talked about University of Nebraska before and how they're a huge football uh, university, but that's what gravitates a lot of attention here in the state. Um, but for me, it, it was always a dream to grow up and play for the Prairie Wolves here at Nebraska Westland. So um, I always I always knew that was um, the right fit for me. It was like a second home. I know this place like the back of my hand. And um, especially having the opportunity to come here and play for my dad. I, at the time coming in as a freshman, I got to, got to play with my older brother, Crew, for a year. And now as a senior, I actually get to play um, with my younger brother, Quinn. So getting to have all the family ties, we had so many uh, cousins, uncles who have gone to school here. It's, I mean, it's, it's a no brainer to, to come here and it's been nothing short of amazing either. So um, I, I, uh, I've loved my time here and while it might've been an easy decision, it was also the best decision. That's great, man. That's awesome. I don't think I've seen that many, um, you know, people that really just carry on that legacy like that on the D3 level. So it's definitely good to see that you, you know, kept 
kept the lineage going with that. <laughs> yeah, we. I think it was something like, like six or seven of the Keller family members have played football here too. So it's, I mean, it's a long line. We took a picture at my brother's graduation ceremony that I can send you sometime. But <laughs> we've all got our, our jerseys on, and it's it's pretty cool. So so that means we're probably gonna see some some. Little little uh, Brayleys coming around <laughs> yeah. in the future. Yeah, we'll get some some junior Kellers running around here. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> All right, so um, you know, what's what's some of your uh, you know, goals for the future? I know you're a senior now. Um, you know, obviously we talked about you know you applying to a couple master's programs and things like that. So, um, just kind of talk about what you want to see happen in your career in the next couple of years. Yeah. So. Uh, actually, just a few days ago, accepted a, a position at the University of Nebraska in their in their master's program. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, their master's program for intercollegiate athletic administration. So, uh, super grateful for that opportunity, and I'm gonna gonna be staying here in Lincoln, which is great, stay close to home, and and uh, pursue uh, pursue that degree. Um, and through it, uh, hopefully, continue to work with. A startup company here in town is called Open Doors. They work uh, entirely with uh, social media marketing for athletes. So, again, keeping that at athletic realm and um, really through it, even hope to get some coaching opportunity under my belt uh, if that presents itself. So, it's definitely staying close to athletics and just kind of seeing, uh, seeing what opportunities the Lord puts before me. Awesome. That's awesome, man. Definitely. Um, so, like, so last question. Um, what's some of some advice that you would give to, you know, D three athletes coming in, whether they're coming into high from high school, or you know, their current D three student athletes? Um, what's some advice that you would give them? Oh, that's a, that's again a great question. I think, I think back to my very last game of football this season. So, a little precursor for it. Um, three, I guess, three games before the last one. Uh, suffered a concussion in the football game, and right at the end of that game, uh, my mind is going as thinking, okay, that's like it's probably the end of my senior season. That's the last football game I ever get to play. And we like, took pictures with my family because, and I mean, the emotional whirlwind came in. I just kind of thought that was it. And the next week following, or second to last game there, um, wasn't able to play and was on the sidelines and that was just that was just so tough um, to see that um, see my team out there and not being able to contribute um, on the field and coming into our last game of the year I was lucky enough to get cleared um, through our training staff and everything and was able to get back on the field and what I told the guys in the locker room before we went out was um, it's like a lot of seniors for the last game have all the emotions um, and are just sad that it's their last game and they're missing that closure too I guess when it's over they're probably thinking like man I just wish I had one more game to play but for me um, that last game of our season it was that feeling of okay this is my last game I, I get one more and and I just I mean we didn't even win the last game like <laughs> we, we actually uh, got blown out but it was just a feeling of like wow we uh you know, I was just in love with this sport again. Being able to go back and practice a few days with the team just really made me remember how much I, I love the sport of football and and just the guys that I was with out there too. So I think my the reason I tell that story and my advice I give to any D3 student athletes through that uh, is just remember your passion for your sport. Uh, it is, again, I think it's easier for D3 student athletes to see that than you know, even D2, D1 athletes because of all the glitz and, and the lights that's going on at their level. But for us, it's uh, there's minimal distractions there. You can remember pretty quickly why you're doing your sport um, for the love of it. And, and through that, just just don't forget that. And enjoy those those moments with your teammates uh, and, and continue to, to soak it up while you have the opportunity. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Um... Uh, definitely, it's, just, it's it hits a little close to home for a lot of people now. You know that based on the situations, um, you know a lot of kids are getting their um, seasons cut short or you know cut out altogether. So, you know it's definitely important to you know make sure that everybody's taken care of. Make sure that they remember that you know this is the most 
most fun that they're going to have with this sport. So just make sure to just, you know, make it the best. So it's mm-hmm. definitely important. Yeah, and, and my heart goes out to um, all the student athletes whose seasons have been cut short, especially the, the spring seniors right now, too, who, who maybe didn't have the chance to even compete this season. So I can't imagine uh, uh, the stress and the pressure and the, the grief that they're feeling through their season being cut short. So, um, again, National SAC is doing uh, all that we can to help uh, communicate with the national office, provide resources for you guys um, in this tough time. And again, for those, uh, maybe those underclassmen or those other student athletes who still have eligibility left, um, I just hope that you guys can cherish the the time that you have with your with your teammates playing your sport uh, because it is is a blessing and it is worth it. Definitely, definitely. Um, well, Brady, that's all I got for you today, man. Um, again, thank you for coming on. Thank you for being our first guest on here. We definitely appreciate it. And, you know, hopefully sure. we can talk a little bit in the future, maybe interview again sometime. That would be awesome. Thank you so much for having me. And I, I wish the best for you and your team um, and getting this, getting this thing started. Thanks, man. Definitely appreciate it. Um, you know, before we go, um, we just want to thank everybody else that tuned in. Um, you know, make sure you follow us again on our website at um, InsideD3.com. Follow our Instagram and our Twitter pages at D3Inside. Um, and yeah, man, that's all I got for everybody. Um, again, I'm Morgan Cheatham, your host. Um, this is the Inside D3 Show, and we are signing off. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the Mascot of the Week. My name is Sam Vibrock. I am going to take you on the mascot journey of a lifetime, and I'm an Inside D3 staff writer. My goal of this segment is to, every week, spotlight a new, unique college mascot in the D3 landscape. Today, I am going to focus on the LaSalle University Lasers. The Lasers is the the LaSalle University Lasers is the only D1, D2, or D3 nickname that has the lasers in it. So I'm going to tell you the story of why LaSalle University calls themselves the lasers. It all began in the spring of 1851 when a group of individuals gathered together as the sun rose on the sky. and illuminated uh, their Bragdon Hill, these individuals with a laser-like focus made a decision to found LaSalle College at the time. As the founders known as the Boomers, the bo- uh, Boomer, which is the university mascot, he is a torchbearer, um, put shovels into the rocky New England soil. The sparks flew and the flame of knowledge was ignited for a new generation of students. The lamp of knowledge today is known on the university seal. It's also known um, by its 150 years of the torchlight parades. The torchlight parades have been a tradition of LaSalle's rich rich uh, tradition of light, the pursuit of knowledge and excellence. If you want to learn more about LaSalle University Lasers, please visit their website. And also tune back in next week when I spotlight a brand new unique college nickname. Again, my name is Sam Vibrock reporting for Inside D3.